Hello Great Talks, I'm Priscilla Fenelani. You may simply call me Miss Priscilla and today I'm here to help you prepare for your upcoming paper 2 for mathematical literacy on the 19th of May. I hope and pray that your paper 1 went well, but if you are interested in making sure that you still make the most out of your paper 2, this video is for just that. But before we get into the last minute preparations, if you are interested in having one-on-one -on -one sessions with me all throughout the weekend, here's how you can do that. Now, if you need one-on-one -on -one help with anything that we have covered in this video or this subject in general, we have a visual program that can help you with just that. From anywhere in the country, all you need is an email and a WhatsApp and we are able to give you personalized help for a monthly fee. This will cover full lesson recordings as well as notes and study materials for any of your subjects that you need personal help with. This will include some of the subjects that are not even covered on this channel. For example, ch subjects like history. You will soon see our full subject list. We will also cover scopes for those specific subjects as well as attempt past papers together. But what's most important about this virtual sessions is that you get full-time communication meaning from the hours of 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. you are able to send in your questions even if you send them at late between the hours of 8 and 4 you will get replies to your questions you will get to go back and forth and get full-time attention on any question that you do have even if we have to repeat something over and over again you get to have that personalized help that is helpful to you as you can see with some of the examples there we get to exchange scripts we get to exchange question papers and you get to show me what it is that you wrote and you even get markings for your questions to see how you actually do perform when it comes to a specific question or a specific subject grade 10 to grade 12 as well as those who are upgrading and rewriting those are the full list of subjects that we do offer if you are interested in any of this for you to be able to get your prize quotation it is very simple all you have to do is email me on that email address that you see there when you do email make sure that in the subject line you write your name and say name and then in the body of your email that's where you will tell me your grade and the subjects that you need help with it can be one subject or it can be a mixture of subject hands we are saying that you need to email for you to be able to get your price quotation now because this is one-on-one -on -one, it means that it puts a limit on the number of people I can take per month so I'm going to be limiting it to 10 students per month so make sure that you email to secure your spot If I were you, this is what I would spend my weekend doing. First, I would get my basic conversions out of the way. So being able to move from imperial to metric or from metric units to imperial units. So by imperial units, you know we are talking about your gallons, your yards, your miles, your pints, whereas metric is your kilometers, meters, and liters. Then I will also make sure that I know how to convert from millimeters to centimeters to meters and kilometers. This is because this is a distance conversion and it comes up in many, many, many questions. So you will still see it even when you get to the measurement questions. Then also on top of that, I would add the conversion from milliliter to liter to kiloliter because that one will also sneak up on you ever so often. Measurement would be the topic that I spend majority of my time on starting with perimeter. With perimeter we are looking at a 2D shape and the 2D shape that I will make sure that I get comfortable with calculating the perimeter of will definitely be a rectangle. But as you know, a perimeter also applies to a square, but a square is not too popular in question papers. I'm sure you would have seen if you have been practicing quite a number of past question papers. So perimeter of a rectangle is what I would prioritize. Then I would, prior I would also look into calculating the circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle forces me to look at 
determining my diameter as well as my radius then from there i move on to calculating area both area of a rectangle and area of a circle this is when we are dealing with 2d shapes that are the flat shapes then we move on to 3d shapes when i look at my 3d shapes i'm looking at a box and i'm looking at a cylinder i'm also going to practice how to calculate my total surface area for both a cylinder and a rectangular box be aware that your formula for each and every single one of these will be provided in the questions that you are meeting so as you come to a question it will show you the calcul the formula for a perimeter circumference and area and a total surface area the only thing that you need to concern yourself with as you practice throughout the weekend is can you substitute and can you substitute proper if there's a missing variable are you able to solve for that missing variable are you able to determine and find it all of that will also apply to volume so with volume also make sure that you know how to substitute into the formula and if there's a missing variable you are able to find it now with volume they also like to ask questions about the terminology used in volume such as to define capacity or give the difference between volume and capacity so beware of such terminologies then from there i would move on to packaging now with packaging this is where the basic conversions are going to come back again because this is going to deal with the distance and a lot of the times they will give you different units and that's going to require you to do conversions before you can proceed if you're not familiar with packaging make sure that you do as many question papers as you can and make sure that you target the questions on packaging usually it's one of those questions that are very long and carry a lot of marks so you wouldn't want to miss out on that amount of marks the trick here is if you are given things in different units the first thing that you must do is convert everything to be in the same unit then you can proceed working with the same unit and that is why the basic conversions come into play then from there we move on to the body mass index also known as the bmi and the bmi chart so if you're not comfortable with your bmi chart make sure that you do get comfortable with it in the video that we covered that we where we did a full paper two i showed you how you should go about doing your bmi please make sure that you download that question paper and the addendum as well and you practice that bmi chart until it makes sense to you know how to deal with the percentiles as well as using the bmi formula to calculate a person's bmi know how to find their height know how to find their mass as well meaning know how to play with that formula with maps and scales the first thing that i will do is learn how to work with different types of scales so you know that we have a numerical scale and a bar scale if you don't know this now you do know so go look for questions where they use a bar scale and a numerical scale in the paper two question we did in this video they were working with a bar scale and i mentioned how you need to use a ruler for that one so if you have access to a printer this weekend make sure that you print out your question papers so that you can practice how to work with bar scales because they need you to measure on paper and measure the distances and work with what's on the ruler and i showed you in that video how to convert what you find in your ruler which also brings me to the point don't forget your rulers when you're going into this examinations you're going to need them then also i'm going to focus on how to calculate a scale factor can you determine a scale factor that was used in a map or in a house plan from there i'm also going to look, pay attention to my elevations do i know my north elevation do i know my south elevations and also to define them because they also like to use those as terms to define then from there i'm also going to look at for my types of maps usually when you get a question on maps the first question that they will ask you is what type of map are you looking at 
so you need to be able to know different types of maps it's an easy question and it becomes silly when you lose marks on easy questions directions is another simple one that some of you still struggle with so i would practice that i would practice how to give directions using my northeast southwest southwest northeast in from moving one point to the other because that's a very common question With probabilities, I would focus on what's common. As you know, that probabilities is going to be an integrated question, so it's not going to be a standalone question. So that means that majority of the marks will be in measurement and maps and scales, so probabilities will be here and there. So I would focus on the things that are the most important when it comes to probabilities. The first one being calculating a probability and writing your answer as a decimal so usually with a probability you find your answer as a fraction so converting it to a decimal becomes uh, something that you need to put in practice now converting to a decimal is not a problem because you can punch that in your calculator your calculator will give you that where people struggle is that decimal needs to be rounded off so the rounding off may be where you struggle so make sure that you are able to convert it to a decimal round it off to the correct decimal place and then the other trick is also writing the answer of a probability as a percentage so knowing how to convert it to a percentage becomes important these are the things that with any luck you have already learned when you were preparing for your paper one what's most important with probabilities though is focusing on a tree diagram know how to complete a tree diagram and tell a probability from it to have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below